That's just how it is. Everything was better in the old days. Well, that's just how he is. Always talking. Um, uh, who are you? A uh, Yero. I. Uh, uh, this is about his death, isn't it? Uh, uh, the rampage. Of course, who hasn't? Yero was one of us, after all. It is terrible. Simply terrible. Uh, you want to hear an old man's opinion, though? I I always expected that something like this would happen. Malthus, forgive me for talking about a keeper like that, but it's the truth. Hard to explain, really. Come on, uh, let's find somewhere to sit. Uh, it'll be easier to talk that way. Huh? Can I help you? Blazes, why do travelers always think I'm here to answer the questions? But, well, let me think. Uh, you should take a look at the beach right behind Merrick's farm. The tides wash all kinds of plunder ashore. You should go armed, though. There's a lot of king's crabs around. <laughs> what? You mean apart from frenzied animals, hordes of living dead lurking through the wilderness and this whole red madness thing? No, none. Just be careful when you're outside the walls. Well, Yarrow. Yarrow. That's quite a subject, you know. You were right when you said we were best we friends. Too easy on this Our fathers knew each other. For as long as I can remember, Yarrow and I were getting into trouble together. At least, until his mother died. No. Bandits killed her in broad daylight on, on Penny Road. Today these incidents are common, but not back then. The road was considered safe. Very safe. She was on her way to Ark, accompanied by three other women, and they were set upon at the pass. None of them survived. Yarrow was shattered. I think the worst part was how his father went downhill after his wife's death. The fishery decayed, and the poor guy filled his days with boozing and sleeping. It changed Yarrow forever. Well, that's a good question. On the one hand, he became a man, despite his tender age. On the other hand, something inside him woke up, so to speak. A desire to make more of his life. Old Mother Jenica noticed it and took him under her wing. He learned how to read and write, and soon he knew all the holy verses by heart. When he didn't have to help his drunken father, he helped in the village as much as he could. Indeed, that's one way to look at it. It wasn't long before he was the, the jewel of the village. The striving young fisherman destined for great things, even though he was only on the path of a manufacturer. And then the inevitable happened. A keeper of the order came to Riverville to see the prodigy with his own eyes. And behold, in addition to Yarrow's ingenuity, he also had a slumbering magical talent. The keeper took him away, and a few months later, he started his novitiate. Since then, I've only seen him once or twice, as he rarely visited Riverville. I, I don't think he ever noticed how much that hurt me. <laughs> if one of the manufacturers makes it to Sergeant of the Guard, it's reason enough for a bard song. He must have been the first novice in centuries who was not of the sublime path. So yes, sir, it is uncommon. 
more than that. Oh, it's hard to explain. I believe it was the way he was talking about his grand plans. How he wanted to make the world a better place, to become the greatest keeper since Lorem Waterblade. Underneath all this, there was a... there was an anger. An anger mixed with deep grief and disappointment. Uh, I don't think he was aware of it, because he drew all his strength from that anger. The strength to do all this, to, to learn and to work day and night, but it frightened me, like the Blue Death. It slumbers inside the pathless mage who believes he can master magic without the Order's help. At first, it grants power, but then, one day, it bursts out in an unholy wave of destruction, turning him into one of the monsters in the old songs. <sighs> um, anyway, I'm just an old man. What do I know about these matters? Now let me go to sleep, my dame. All these memories are making me weary. Yes, of course.